hello it's time for the um for me looking back on the third quarter of the year can you believe we have only got three months until the end of the year time has gone so so quickly so i'm looking at books that i read in july august and september and looking at my successes and i have 10 five stars in this quarter which is brilliant we had the book uh, long list come out during this period so yes uh, several of these were from the book a long list as you would expect from the book is to have five stars so we start off with shrines of gaiety which is kate atkinson's new book and that one came out in it came out last month and this takes us back to the 1920s and the nightclub scene and I really enjoyed the characters in this. It, it was such a good read and it really sort of evoked the, the 1920s era and the, the corruption and oh, oh, and the characters, first class. Then I moved on to two children's books and they were Kieran Millwood Hargraves, Julia and the Shark. Um, that was the first one. And that was one that came out, oh, quite a while ago. That came out, let me have a look. Bear with me. I mean, that came out in um, March. Um, no, it actually came out, I think I've got my dates wrong. I think it came out before then. And this is the story of Julia and her dad who go off to Shetland because her dad's going to fix the lighthouse. And her mum is obsessed with a Greenland shark. And it's dealing with mental illness. Beautifully written and beautifully illustrated. Um, the, the author does not sugarcoat anything for children, for young adults. These are sort of middle grade books, but she doesn't patronise them. She doesn't sugar-coated she tells it as it is she treats children as adults she tells them what they need to know the second one of hers that i read and it came out again it came out in september and it's layla and the blue fox and this is dealing with migration and borders and we have um layla who goes to Norway to meet up with her mother, who is tracking this little Greenland fox, this little Greenland, this sorry, not Greenland, this Arctic fox across the, the ice. And it talks about migration because they, Layla and her mother had fled Damascus. And it talks about climate, but it also talks about friendship and loyalty. Again, absolutely super book. My next five star was Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczyk. And this was a super, super book. Janina is a fantastic character. She lives alone, she's into astrology and the natural world. And then there's murders happening. And she believes that the murders are being committed by the animals because the murders are all of people who do the hunting. And she thinks it's the animals taking revenge. And, oh, it is such a brilliant book. And her voice is wonderful, absolutely wonderful character. I adore that one. Then we move on to the book long list. And my first book that I read was Night Crawling by Layla Motley. And this was a debut novel by the youngest person, the, the youngest author on the book long list. And it deals with Kiera, who is drawn into prostitution but it's also looking at police corruption 
because she is abused by the police. She, the author deals, draws on a true story that something happened in her, um, in her town. And it's at about a young girl who was picked up by the police and sort of, well, you know, you do what we want or we'll sort of fine you, jail you, that sort of stuff. And it's the story of Kiera surviving day by day. And it's a hard hitting book, especially when you know it's based on a true event. Next one was The Colony. Now, I love this one. I'm surprised it wasn't on the shortlist. And it's The Colony by Audrey McGee. And it's set in the time of the Troubles in Ireland. And we're on a remote island where we've got um, an English painter arriving because he wants to capture the essence of the island. And we've got French linguist arriving because he's trying to map the dialect because this island is the one of the only places where the Irish dialect is still spoken. And he's mapping the change as years go by. And he is absolutely furious that the English painter is there. This English painter who knows no nothing of the dialect because he can see him ruining the whole, all the work he's done. And it's the, these two men and the effect they have on the people of the island. Absolutely brilliant book. And why it didn't get onto the shortlist, I do not know. Another one from the long list, and this one did make the short list, and it's Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. And this, this is the one that I want to win. It's on the short list, and I think it's the best one on the short list. It's the one that moved me the most. It draws on, it's setting Ireland, and it draws on the idea of the Magdalene laundries. And we've got Bill who is a coal merchant, and when he's delivering coal to the convent, he finds something that maybe he shouldn't have, and then it's his moral dilemma. Does he reveal, or does he keep secret? And it's set in winter, set around Christmas time, and the descriptions are absolutely wonderful. It's a very short book, but there is so much in it and it is so powerful and it's a book you keep thinking and thinking and thinking about. Um, the next one was The Seven Moons of Marley Almeida. Again, on the book of shortlist. And, oh, this was such a good read. Marley has died. He's been murdered. He's in the afterlife and he's got seven moons to sort out who killed him to sort of get his affairs in order and the affairs he wants in order are the release of negatives that he's kept hidden that um, will throw light on the corruption that goes on in war. He's a war photographer and he would take photographs for people who paid him and he kept negatives as a sort of insurance and he wants those out into the open. He wants people to know about these things but he's dead. He's in the afterlife, so how does he get his negatives into the public domain? How does he haunt people to tell them where the negatives are hidden? Fantastic story. Absolutely brilliant. Then we move on to The Trees by per Percival Everett, which is all to do with the lynchings in Mississippi. And it's full of black humour because we are in this really racist town where murders are being committed. And... The detectives that are brought in to solve it are black. So you've got these black detectives in this really racist town. And it's full of black humour. And we have gruesome murders. But a couple of times, what he does is he, he hits you between the eyes. He does something that makes you stop and take stock. And you think, wow, really? And it's the the juxtaposition of the, the humour and the the truth sort of thing. Super. 
And then the final five star I had was one I've only just finished. And it's The Mysterious Case of the Alpton Angels by Janice Hallett that comes out in January. And this is her latest book. And it's, again, all written with text messages and emails and WhatsApps and transcriptions. And we have Amanda who is looking at the case of the Alpton Angels, which was a murder-suicide of a cult 18 years previously, which also involved a couple of teenagers and a baby. And she is searching for this baby. She wants to find this baby who will now be 18 and revisit the, the case, looking at it from the baby's point of view. And we have betrayal, we have revenge, we have cover-ups, absolutely riveting read. So, my book of the quarter. Out of my ten five stars, which is the one that is my book of the quarter? And it's got to be the one that I'm picking to win the Booker Prize. It's Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, because that's a book that might be tiny, but it has stayed with me. And it has made me think and consider and it has left an imprint. So that is my book of the month. Not the book of the month, the book of the quarter. So three months to go till the end of the year. What will I be reading in the next three months? How many five stars will I get? So happy reading. Take care.